let's just go to urban legend number four and think about it just for a minute. Radiotherapy plus immunotherapy in the abscopal effect. Huh. Do we think the abscopal effect is real or is it an urban legend? So, Reinhard, so let's just go around the room. Here you have four of the world's experts mm -hmm. in melanoma. <laughs> Do you think the abscopal effect is real? Have you seen it? Meaning giving radiotherapy after progression on immunotherapy and seeing a subsequent systemic response either in the presence or absence of further immunotherapy. That's to me what the abscopal effect is. So I, I make it short and I have to say I have never seen a real case where I think this is what is reported in. Okay, in and remember that's exactly what was published by Mike Postow in the New England Journal progression on immunotherapy, then radiation yeah. to one place, su subsequent systemic response. Axel, have you ever seen that? I have seen multiple cases. And oh. Multiple Caroline? cases. I've really? Seen, I've yeah. seen some cases, yes. Uh, when you say I some cases, I mean, what numbers Not, are I we mean, talking uh, about? A handful, maybe. I mean, a handful. Handful. Yeah. For Dirt? me, uh, yeah. yeah. I have probably seen it once, and I've treated a fair number of patients in yeah. my time. The question is, you know, I think that the, you defined the uh, abscopal effect very wide. No. For me, the true abscopal effect is, you know, if you irradiate a lesion and, you know, other lesions which were not irradiated and non-irradiated fade away and in the, not in the presence of another immunotherapy. And I think this is something which is, which is, you know, really interesting. It could be a late benefit from the previous so-called progressive disease on PD-1 antibodies or it, is a pseudo -pro it was a pseudo-progression pseudo which turns to an objective response later on. So the abscopal defect, to define correctly for me, it's, it's a black box for yeah, me. Yeah, it's, well, it's difficult because sometimes you have patients who respond, but you have the therapy underneath, so you don't know. I mean, even if the response are rare with EP, you cannot rule out that it's EP, the distance. That's sites. what I meant. But, um, so you, you have to be in this situation that you described, Jeff, that patient really progress, we are sure, then we irradiate and they begin to respond. So that in, indeed is real. Although pseudo progression is a real phenomenon. I think we've all, we uh, all agree, we've definitely. all seen pseudo progression. Yeah. But, but, but Dirk, what, what do you tell the patients? I mean, how, how often are you going to see this pseudo progression? So I think uh, in, the, in the era of EP, we, I think we have uh, talked a lot about pseudo progression. I think we will see pseudo progressions in the round of maybe 10 percent, so um, pro possibly even less uh, of, uh, of patients who have true pseudoprogression, which then really turns into a, a real response. I mean, there might be some lesions where there is a flare-up by infl uh, inflammation, which you also see uh, with initial increase uh, on the scanning and then also a decrease. But overall, that um, pseudoprogression uh, during the entire scanning uh, is turning into a partial or complete response is a rare thing. W whether this is um, an issue with PD-1 antibodies um, in comparison to, to IPI, um, it's not so clear. I think we have, I think we have a learning curve in that. Uh, I think also the way we are scanning in the scanning intervals um, also determine when we call uh, yeah, this sure. pseudo progression. If we do scanning only every 12 weeks, the likelihood that we will um, see patients who have a pseudo progression will probably decrease. Uh, in contrast, if we do scanning earlier, after six or eight weeks, when the uh, immune uh, system is full in action uh, and is actually um, yeah, causing uh, problems to the radiologist to, uh, yeah, to discriminate between tumor progression and pseudoprogression. 